What up, leaguers? Welcome to the Spectacular Spoiler League. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City, Hazy Roman. As always, I'm joined by the Gotham Knight, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And today, we're in the Hall of Spoilers to talk about the top five worst Marvel Cinematic Universe villains. Deep Voice, what's up with these people, man? What's up with these villains, man? Ah, just most of these are missed opportunities. Yes, again, killing like the vibe, it, man. Like we said in our top five best MCU villains, uh, Marvel has a bad habit of not doing so well with their antagonists because they just like putting the good guys over a little too much. And you see, good guys are nothing without their rogues gallery. And you got to respect these bad guys a little bit better, Marvel. Truth. Either they were underwhelming or they weren't as powerful as they should have been or as influential as they should have been or they were just straight up kind of boring or just mm-hmm. there. Forgettable. Some of these, I forgot about these guys. Yes. I'm like, Hazy, who are these guys you even mentioning? And I'll be like, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's start off. Let's start off with the honorable mentions for today. Who do we got? One honorable mention today. Our honorable mention, and this might be a little controversial because as we were talking about this, we thought people are probably going to say this is their number one worst MCU villain. Which would, be, which to me would be a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch, but people have strong feelings about this guy. And that's the resident stringless puppet himself, Ultron. <laughs> from uh, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. The which... stringless puppet, I like that. <laughs> I mean, he's been saying it since that first trailer. I mean, did you hear that there are no strings on him? I mean, there are none. There are none. Zero. For those of you that don't know, Ultron is one of the biggest villains in Marvel comics. I mean, the guy just is like a <laughs> just never is gone. Is he always finds a way to come back? I yeah. mean, he's a super intelligent artificial intelligence. Definitely. I uh, made by Hank Pym. Uh, who was Ant-Man, but in the movies they changed it up. So it was Tony Stark and uh, Bruce Banner. And Ultron is typically, he has a adamantium-laced exoskeleton or suit, which obviously you can't do in the MCU. But again, for a villain that the entire Avenger squad has difficulty fighting off, to to, to be defeated in, in, I guess, the latter half of the movie, the way that he was, it just... It left the bad taste in our mouths. I mean, I kind of enjoyed the movie when I watched it. It's not the best of the Marvel movies. But in hindsight, they could have done Ultron a little bit better. I mean, Ultron, again, Ultron is super powerful. He's he, he's up there in terms of just worldwide threats, like apocalypse. Uh, he's not as as, as as big of a threat as, I say, someone like Thanos. But he... he he could be up there. He's he's almost like I guess Marvel's version of Brainiac in a sense. Mm, mm. In a sense. I'm, I mean, I feel also the Marvel the Marvel movie, uh, the Age of Ultron movie, didn't do well in, uh, you know, showing his kind of his development and his leap to the idea that the Avengers must be destroyed. You know, I felt like it was a little bit of a quick jump. But yeah. the reason why he's not our in our actual top five is because James Spader actually brought some gravitas to the role and. You know, he kind of had like shades of Tony Stark, and I think that was dope. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, just didn't get he, enough build. Didn't he was very well. Build. He was very well characterized, but you know, they made him look like a chump in a couple of scenes here and there. Like when he met up with Claw, and they got kind of uh, that deal got broken by the Avengers or interrupted by the Avengers. He just kind of ran off. Like he didn't really, <laughs> you know, beat them up as as Ultron would typically defeat the Avengers. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. But that being said, Ultron is our honorable mention. Number five. Number five. Top five worst MCU villains. We've got... And so this, is a, this is a little bit of a double whammy. We snuck two in here. I mean, you're going to see yeah. this again on this list. But we've got Ivan Vanko and Justin Hammer. Okay? I mean, just two villains that just under... Iron Man under... Oh, they underwhelmed me. Iron Man 2. <laughs> Iron Man 2. I'm, I can't even speak. I'm just so... I'm, I'm so... I'm still exasperated by that. Because Iron Man 2 was such a highly anticipated movie. I mean, to this day, Iron Man is considered one of the best movies in the MCU. Mm-hmm. And Ivan Vanko and Justin Hammer just did not live up to that. I mean, Justin Hammer, for example, he's just a joke. He is a complete yeah. joke in that movie. Like... He's meant to be seen as a quote-unquote rival to Tony Stark, but he never rivals him. He's never as witty as Tony Stark is. His technology isn't up to par like Tony Stark's is. I mean, we we see him, like, he he creates the War Machine armor, and the ex-wife 
You know, that, mm-hmm. that, that missile just doesn't work. You know, like, Justin yeah. Hammer was a joke. You know, characters kind of, like, always kind of side-eye him. Like, yo, this guy's mad weird. Yeah. And he was just, like, a Tony Stark wannabe. And yeah. I felt like it w- didn't do justice to the the, the the charm that Justin Hammer could have in the comics. You know, he's, yeah. he's vile, and he's a villain, and he's annoying. But he is a rival to Tony Stark. And he yeah, never yeah. actually felt like a rival to Tony Stark. He just felt like yeah. a pest. He was just just inconsequential i honestly forgot that he was in any marvel movie i don't even remember what it was that he did i don't i honestly think i recruited ivan vanko that's really what he did that's pretty much all that he did and i guess suits of armor and just look like a clown i mean he was he was he was the definition of a buster ivan vanko is kind of packaged in with justin hammer because obviously they worked together and they were both in the same movie but that character maybe sort of had, you know, some something about him that would have been promising. Uh, but they ultimately had him not really do much. I mean, he had an interesting scene where he interrupted the F1 race. Yeah. He kind of came in and just, you know, Iron Man. But Iron Man kind of, uh, uh, you know. Disposed of him quickly. Yeah, disposed of him quickly and, and was the one that really stood out in that scene when he put on the, the briefcase suit that was, you know, kind of cool at the moment. Uh, I don't know. He just and and what he was trying to fight for. I guess he felt uh, he was another person that felt uh, betrayed, or, or or he felt that his situation was res- uh, Tony Stark was responsible for his uh, bad situation in yeah. life. You know, because and basically it had something to do with his father right. uh, going through hard times and eventually falling sick and dying, and and he just spent years after that building this kind of. Wax suit. I'm gonna be honest with you. It wasn't even much of a suit. It was just like some electric whips that he had. Just well, he definitely to, like, had the suit destroy. later in the movie, but it just took too long to get there. Yeah, yeah. It's just again forgettable. And to to get someone like Mickey Rourke, who was can be a great actor. I mean, a bit of a waste. Agreed. I agree. Uh, number four, man. I'm, I'm I'm down by that. See, I, I just I just <laughs> the mayor of Hype City don't even feel hype anymore because because <laughs> that conversation. Number four, Deep Boys. Listen, who we got? Hey, Hazy, you need to control, or should I say master that hype. <laughs> Take control of it so we can power on through this list. Because it's a lot of disappointment, especially with this number four on our list of worst Marvel villains. We have one of the most powerful people in the universe, <laughs> Ronan the Accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Now, that Guardians of the Galaxy, fantastic movies. One of my favorite MCU movies. But they... they they should have left the joking away from Ronan the Accuser. You know, a few punchlines here and there. It's fine because he's an alien. He's a Korean. Whatever. They don't get uh, human humor. But my man was defeated by the Guardians dancing. They Peter had a dance Peter off. Quill dancing. <laughs> Peter was, Quill don't dancing. Don't bring down the Guardians down with this shit, brother. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Quill distracted Ronan the Accuser. This guy is he's like the Darth Vader of the Kree Empire. Definitely. This this guy is an absolute beast and he gets defeated by but <laughs> Look, I love Peter Quill, but he's he, he's silly as hell and he's dancing off and is able to distract Ronan the Accuser enough for them to use one of the infinity gems on him to just make him explode. Yeah, uh, into raspberry sauce or something. I would I would have also liked if they went more into the reasoning behind you know I mean listen we know that there was a, a war between the, you know the Korean and, and, uh, and Zandar and yeah. you know the Korean Empire and Zandar and we know that he wanted to take vengeance on the Kree or on the the Zandar the Zandarians rather but yeah. I would have just loved if they gave more like explanation as to why this dude is like out here like yo I'm gonna kill these people and they also made a point to say that he felt that the Korean Empire was abandoning what his people originally stood for and i just felt like they i would have loved a little bit more detail about the zandarian kree politics and and that may sound boring considering how great guardians of the galaxy was but i do think that's fair considering the fact that you don't really know much about him you know this guy is willing to go up against to disobey thanos for his creed you know what i mean like that's something that means something I totally agree, and I think it could have been remedied with like one like quick conversation. As someone that kind of knows a little bit more about the comics, I understood what was going on, but for sure they didn't really. You didn't exactly understand what this guy's motivation was. You didn't understand that the Kree Empire 
was once a great empire. Mm. And he felt, you know, he, he felt, I guess, disrespected by the fact that people didn't fear mm. that the, Z- the Zendarians wouldn't just bend the knee, so to speak, and to the whim of whatever was left of the Kree Empire, you know. Yeah. And, and how, how much of a disrespect a character like that uh, uh, feels over something yeah. like that. You know, over the fact that the Kree you know uh, uh mingled with like human dna like they they've enslaved like tons and conquered tons of like alien races all over the galaxy you know you don't really get that sense in the mcu uh so i totally agree that it could have given this guy a little bit more of a reason to be the way that he is other than just someone that's working for thanos i mean they this is one line i'm gonna read from ronan accuser and I wish that there was a little bit more exposition on this in particular. He says, they yeah. call me terrorist, radical, zealot, because I obey the ancient laws of my people, the Kree, and punish those who do not. Because I do not forgive your people, for to the Zendarians, for mm-hmm. taking the life of my father, his father, and his father before him. A thousand mm-hmm. years of war between us will not be forgotten. Like, mm-hmm. being called a terrorist, a radical, and a zealot, and, you know, because he obeys the ancient laws of his people. What are the ancient laws of your people? Is it just to take vengeance on your... To anyone who's wronged you? Is it to go... It's to never end war? Because, <laughs> you know, they've had a thousand year war. Is that, is that you know, to keep warring? I, like, I don't understand, you know, what what was going on there, per se. Well, they could have tweaked it to, for him to say that, uh, you know, he wants to bring the glory of the ancient Kree Empire back again. There and you go. This, you know, that... The Kree, the rulers of the Kree Empire have grown lazy and, and you know, uh, weak. So I'm going to defeat our longtime enemies and I'm going to rally the Kree Empire to be the great warriors they once used to be or something like that. That would have been, you know, enough explanation right there. Some exposition would have been nice. You know, they gave exposition uh, for the Infinity Gem or the Infinity Stone, the Power Stone that was featured in that movie. It would have been nice to see a little bit of exposition on uh, on uh, the Kree, the Kree and the, and the Zandarians. But... Alas, Ronan the Accuser, number four, number three, another villain that disappointed us, our worst <laughs> MCU villains. This, this villain, Diamondback, okay? Diamondback, play it! This guy, nah, don't play it. He's not a player, man, okay? I'm leaving the game if he's a player, You jive-ass turkey. Nah, you don't come at me with that, brother. <laughs> Diamondback literally, like, halted a great Luke Cage season one. And completely stalled the second half of that season one. And by all intents and purposes, he was billed amazingly in the first half. Just the mm-hmm. idea that Cottonmouth was afraid of this dude. He was oh, he was looming over the show from very early on with even Shades just hanging out around, uh, you know, uh, Cottonmouth and, and Mariah Diller. Mm-hmm. But when it came down to it, like, I remember when they first showed him and he, you know, he came <laughs> with the sniper rifle and, you know, he was, uh, he was hunting down Luke Cage. I thought he was a henchman. Because I'm like, they build this, this guy, Diamondback, as someone with, like, infinite resources. You know, he's this beastly, you know, uh, uh, crime lord. And my mm-hmm. man is out here with a sniper rifle just running down the middle of the street. I was just like, I know I know the old adage of, you know, if you want something done right, do it yourself. But I'm mm-hmm. like, you don't always, you don't have to do it yourself when it's your first reveal. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I guess the notion was, well, he's badass. He's walking down the street with a sniper rifle. He doesn't care. But yeah. I just... You just never got the, the, the idea that this guy had a lot of resources. I never got the impression this guy had a lot of resources. Then there's that dorky costume he had at the end. <laughs> Will Stryker, you know, him quoting the Bible verses. I actually thought that was cool. I actually thought that was yeah. interesting. It just They just boiled it down to, oh, I hate you because you got attention from our father. Yeah. I was an illegitimate child. I hate you. Meanwhile, they yeah, were best friends was... as kids, and you never revealed any type of hatred towards him at all. Now you want yeah, to all of a sudden was, kill the guy. I'm just like, yeah, that was that was a huge uh, problem. I, what I loved about the character was the fact that they delved into him. You know, there was a he was a black market dealer of of like weapons that were, uh, I guess, a result of the incident that they like to call it, which is basically Avengers One when the, the Chitari kind of come in and Battle of New York. You know, Battle of New York. And it's a nice tie, you know, between Avengers 1 and Luke Cage. And, and that kind of comes up again in Spider-Man Homecoming. So when they were doing that in Luke Cage Season 1, uh, I was very interested. I thought that was a cool uh, aspect for this character. But like you said, this weird storyline between, you know, between Luke Cage and Diamondback's illegitimate father, 
and the fact that they used to go to church or something. And the fact that uh, Diamondback looked like a carpet cleaner. He looked like <laughs> a reject from the Ghostbusters. That, I mean, that was that was a it. terrible way to go. If anyone's reading the current run of the Defenders, Marvel Comics, Diamondback is a villain uh, in the current uh, Defenders comic. And he's actually pretty great in that. If they would have just, I don't know, copied that instead, it would have been a lot better. If it's just a dude... I mean, Diamondback in, in the comics, at least from what I can see. I mean, he doesn't that, look like a, a bug exterminator. No, he doesn't. First off, he first just looks off. like a he just look at the dude. He has, he has you know streetwear. He has like a trench coat on. But the thing is, his backstory. He's just a dude from around the way from Harlem. You know, used to be uh, you know a vicious gangster back in the day. Disappeared. Uh, got some sort of similar experiment done on him, like Luke Cage. And uh, you know, he came back. Uh, I guess Great Gatsby style with some sort of murky past that you don't know about but he's got a lot of money he's got a lot of uh uh pull in a criminal underworld uh and and if they would have kind of explored those avenues a little bit more instead of spending so much time with him just shooting luke cage luke cage is like you know trying to get this bullet out of him and then you get this whole episode about a backstory that nobody cares about uh like hazy said it was just very underwhelming and ultimately disappointing when the season was over and he was ultimately defeated because i mean come on that's what happens in these marvel movies Man or Mar- Marvel shows. Like a, man over here looking like a dreidel in that helmet, man. Get his <laughs> ass out of here. Number two. We snuck two people in here once again. Yes. Deep Boys, hit us with number two. We've got from Iron Man 3, Aldrich Killian and the Mandarin. The or fake the, ass Mandarin. The fake Mandarin played Trevor. by Ben Kinsley. Trevor. God. Uh, awful, I mean, bro. again, you take, awful. You take awful. One, a, a huge Marvel villain. Like, this is a villain... That you can you can just do a lot with the Mandarin, and you make him into a bit of a joke. You do this switcheroo that was just totally unnecessary with the guy. I just I I'm still upset about this because for me they had the perfect setup with the first movie. Tony Stark is kidnapped by the terrorist organization known as the Ten Rings. The Ten Rings. Yes, nice throwback. Could have easily been the Mandarin's organization. Easily. And he could have been, you know, in a way to tie back to number one, he could have been coming at Tony Stark because, yo, he he wrecked his terrorist organization. Yeah. You know, but instead we get this, once again, Marvel's obsession with, uh, you know, suit villains, villains who are suits. You know what I mean? White collar villains, you know, Obadiah Stains, the Yellow Jackets, you know, the, the Justin Hammers. We got Aldrich Killian, man. You know, uh... Loafer extraordinaire, man. <laughs> this guy, he, you know, he he hates Tony Stark because Tony Stark shunned him at one point in time, and you know, once again, Tony's past coming back to haunt him. Fine, but ultimately, you know, him being the person pulling the strings and him randomly, you know, breathing fire like in the movie. I just, I did not. The the Mandarin has ten rings. The 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 ten rings that man, the Mandarin has, uh, you know, affords him each an individual power. And instead, we just get this, you know, fire-breathing dude who can just, you know, heal randomly. And you know, him being super creepy with pepper pots did not help either. I just, I couldn't have, I couldn't take that. And just the reveal is Trevor as, as you know, Ben Kingsley, a fantastic actor who looked to be t- doing a different take on the Mandarin. Just him turning out to just be some actor and some, some, you know, whack dude. You know, I just, I just thought it was just, it was way too hammy, and it. it it took me out of it. It took me out of it. And I, while I enjoyed the movie while I was watching it, when I left, I was like, what? Like, it was like I had one of those moments like, what just what just happened? You know, like, I'm like, damn, like, I'm never going to get that 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 time of my life back, you know? And, you know, even the fact that Aldrich Killian had to, you know, go, had to go on that uh that whole, you know, spiel at the end where he's like, I am the Mandarin. I was like, come on, man. The fact that you got to explain that this is the real Mandarin just goes to show that he shouldn't have been the real Mandarin. And Guy Pierce is a good actor, and they wasted Guy Pierce. Yes. And Ben I mean, Kingsley. How do you waste two two good actors in one shot? Come on, Mark. Yeah. I mean, I uh, Guy Pierce totally agree. Great actor. They did not use him correctly. He dies. I I I kind of hated his powers. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, it was dumb. Again, as a fan of. Like a big, big fan of Marvel Comics. They, you know, they, the extremist storyline in Marvel Comics was super dope. 
and for them to condense it into this sort of thing was super whack. To make them into some sort of, I don't know, just doing energy blast or something like that, and then freaking Pepper Pot saves the day? Oh, yeah, I forgot I about mean, that. I mean, not that a I female character that. can't save the day, but Pepper Potts? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, extremists... The whole extremist uh, storyline with Iron Man, super dope storyline, and it just they were trying to take from that, and obviously it 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 was just like just a little bit, just a little kernel that they didn't really use too well, and 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 the villain again ends up dying, and then Trevor as the Mandarin, um, I mean it's part of it again, just a part of it is an interesting idea, but they shouldn't have made that the Mandarin. That's that's what they shouldn't have done. At the end of the day, they didn't think that the real Mandarin could work. So they 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 made they dumbed it down for the average moviegoer and I mean, it's... as a result they gave us a worse villain. Now, we don't have any confirmation that, you know, Marvel uh, uh, feels that way. I mean, we're pretty sure that Marvel is like, oh, with the Mandarin, it's not going to work, but you got a purple guy from space that has almost like the same sort of skill set, just even more powerful. He's got a the Mandarin just has rings that have powers. Yeah. And you're like, oh, we're not going to do that. But we're going to have some purple guy. You, you know, I just had a thought. Maybe that maybe they thought it echoed too much of what they were trying to do with the Infinity Gauntlet. You I know, guess somebody so, get, they, has, has six pieces or pieces of, of, of something on their hand and it gives them miraculous powers. Well, they could have, I don't know, reworked it somehow. I agree. They could have like an evil, evil Iron Man or something. They tried to remedy it with the, with the All Hail the King uh, Marvel one shot movie that was attached to the Iron Man three Blu Ray DVD release mm-hmm. that uh, basically confirmed that there is a real Mandarin out there and he's not pleased with Trevor for imitating him. But Lord knows if we'll ever see that because I don't even think the majority of the audience knows about All Hail the King. Fingers, uh, but fr- fingers crossed for Phase Four. I'll tell you who isn't a king and that's Aldrin Killage in the Mandarin. But anyway. <laughs> We do have a king of this list, Deep Voice. Oh, yes. We do have the worst, <laughs> the worst Marvel villain in our humble opinions. And that is your boy, Maliketh. The king of this list and the king of the Dark Elves and the king of MCU villain bum asses. Maliketh got his ass kicked by Frigga, a.k.a. Odin's wife and Thor's mama. Make it Frigga on out of here with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she whipped his ass, and she scarred his face. I mean, th- she ended up getting killed, but it wasn't because Malekith stepped up. I mean, Malekith's endgame just never made sense. It's like the dark, uh, apparently the galaxy or the universe was dark before. Now <laughs> it's, the universe isn't dark anymore, and the dark elves want it to be dark again. Because why? Because they're dark elves, and yeah. they need the universe to be dark. Never explained what that means. Malekith also never felt threatening. For like 90% of the movie, his henchman was more threatening than he was. Yeah, it's just another situation. If they just would have drew from the comics, they would have came out with something way better. Instead of, like, if, if it would have dealt with Malekith trying to take over the realms of Asgard uh, so they could deal with Thor and, and you know, that mythology, would have been probably a little bit more interesting. If you can actually give us... You know, stakes that we actually care about. But whatever Malekith was trying to do, no one watching that movie gave a damn about it. Nobody gave a Nobody damn cared. about it. Nobody like, gave a damn. It, it, is he trying to take over Asgard? Is he trying to take over, I don't know, the realm of the other elves or the dwar- the realm of the dwarves? Or, or like just taking over Asgard in and of itself because Asgard is Asgard and it has a lot of magical, uh, uh, I don't know, artifacts there that would have been good enough that would have been good enough listen they also had an interesting opportunity to to do something cool with him because he's played by christopher eccleston fantastic actor man mm-hmm. like come on man don't waste christopher eccleston on that boo he never feels <laughs> like he's just he never feels like a threat he's just giving orders the whole movie and he himself never does anything badass where you're just like this guy is a beast like yeah. he's probably the most forget i mean the thor dark world movie when you watch it, you might think, eh, you know, it's stupid fun. But at the end of the day, when it's over, like, most people don't even think about Thor The Dark World. And Malekith is largely responsible for that. Just a, a complete, like, waste of a villain. Like, he's one of those villains that you're just, 
expected to believe he's a villain because they tell you he's cruel and he's malevolent. Yeah. That's it. They're like, oh, yeah, he's bad. He's, he wants to bring darkness. <laughs> yeah. He's a dark elf, so he must be a bad guy. And, you know? and I will say, you know, certain set pieces and the design of some of the characters look kind of cool in that movie. Yeah. But they yeah. just, it was just kind of unfortunately wasted uh, on a very, very forgettable plot. I mean, there were some yeah. interesting plot elements that are, that will be important uh, and have been important to some of these other movies and will be important to Thor Ragnarok, which, you know, I'm kind of excited for. I hope it's a good movie. Great. Uh, but he just, he just didn't really do it. I mean, you never felt that this guy was really a threat of any kind to any character. You never felt like he was really going to even come close because he just, again, we didn't understand what, it, what he was going for, what his issue was, what he wanted to do. He was whack. He was whack. Case closed. Not even the comics. No one gives a damn about that character. I never, I never give the excuse of, oh, nobody gives a damn about this character because at the end of the day, it is up to you, the writer, to make this, this character compelling. True. It doesn't matter what the source material is because Marvel has shown that they're willing to deviate from the source material. True, true. You like you have the opportunity to create a character who lost a war and his people were exiled. Show me that emotion. Show me that these people are are feeling like they got something taken away from them, something that was rightfully theirs. Sh- show me that. Let let me feel that for them. You know what I'm saying? They didn't. You know they didn't really get a realm to themselves. They kind of just got isolated. But no, they're just you know Malekith, You know evil guy. Gets his ass kicked by Thor's mom. You know, just average day on Asgard, man. That being said, guys, <laughs> let us know what you think of our top five list. Top five worst villains from the Marvel Cinematic Universe list. Let us know if you agree with this list. Let us know if the, you, you have some villains that you think should be on this list that weren't on this list. And by all means, please support the Spectacular Spoiler League by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a like on this video. We would greatly appreciate that. And if you subscribe... Feel free to turn on notifications so you can be up to date with the latest videos and the latest live streams coming from the Spectacular Spoiler League. We are getting out of here. We're going to go find Mal- Malaketh a personality. We're going to find a lot of these people a, a personality, uh, <laughs> a, a, a reason to care for them. But anyway, we're getting out of here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.